Hey everyone, you finished processing your image? Just look at all that nebulosity. Now let's get annotating. Welcome to SETI Astro. Recently asked me how I was able to annotate all the supernova remnants and globular clusters in my Andromeda image. So today let's work through another example. I have my triangulum galaxy up and let's go find all those remnants, globular clusters, see if there's any quasars in the background and what else we can find. You may already be familiar with the annotation script within Pixinsight, Insight, but it is fairly limited with its catalogs that it has and there is an amazing script out there that we can use to enhance what we find. If you already have the game script installed, you're in luck because you also have the type catalog script installed that we're going to be using today. If you don't, these are two amazing script. One allows you to put elliptical and multipoint masks down, and this script here is the one that we're going to use today to access other catalogs and annotate our image a lot more fully than the normal Pix Insight script. The website where these scripts can be found will be in the description. It'll also have the actual link for your repository to be updated in it. Along with that, you could just get any of these scripts individually. He does have zip files where you can install the script directly into PixInsight if you don't want the whole suite of them. After you go ahead and install the script, it'll be under Script utilities, and then down here on type cat. Opening up the type cat script presents you with the script itself. The upper portion here has all the object types and descriptions of which there is a huge amount. And what the script will do is search the entire image for any of those particular objects and list them in the field below. It's also important that this script will only run if you have a valid astrometric solution in your image. Now scrolling down to the low 100s, you really start getting into a lot of the objects that we would like to annotate. Bubbles, emission objects, galactic nebulae, reflection nebula, and in here is also supernova remnants. So if you want to find all those particular supernova remnant you highlight it and then hit the green down arrow and it will go ahead and find all the ones in this image in this particular case there's 144 of them it has the uh, location name if it has a diameter and what's really great about this too is if you double click any of these items it'll take you right to the Sinbad reference the other item that I selected in the Andromeda Galaxy was the globular clusters. We can go ahead and green down arrow them as well. Now what's interesting with them, it says that there's 225 objects found. In my options, that's what my max download is. So in this image there's actually more than 225 globular clusters and it only downloaded the 225 of them. You can adjust this number to any max download that, uh, that suits you. Now I like adjusting the names that's going to show up in PixInsight annotation script. And you can adjust the file that was just saved in your favorite spreadsheet editor. The file itself is set up so it should open as columns. But if it doesn't, it is uh, tab separated if you need to do text to columns. It will have RA deck, name, diameter, and type. And depending on what I actually want to show in PixInsight, I may combine the type and the name. You can uh, combine them however you choose. In Excel, you can just tell it you want the type first, and then you can put some spaces in between them and then the name and that will go ahead and give you the type followed by the name then you can delete the first named column and then that will be forever the the new names 
In our example, we do have quite a number of supernova remnants and globular clusters. So I think to start out with, let's just swap the name and the type headers and just see what all these objects actually look like within the image. So just change those names, hit save, and we can jump back into PixInsight. Now in PixInsight, we can go ahead and go to render, annotate image. And it's gonna go ahead and pull up the image annotation script. I already have a, a number of items pre-checked in there, but more importantly, at the very bottom, the very last one will be your new custom catalog. Be sure to uncheck any other custom catalogs that you may have already defined. And you can see that it should have the correct catalog path already installed. And then it's looking for that name column. There's a few other ones, the coordinates, uh, but just keeping the name on there will be fine. And click OK. It'll go through and download some various other items, see if there's any duplicates, and then optimize the image. OK, it's done annotating. and. We can go ahead and zoom in, and you can see now the names are either the supernova remnant that we told it or globular cluster. And you can really just see how dense this galaxy is. So if we would have had the, the full names on all those objects, this would have been even more of a cluster to try to see what was going on. But now you could really tell which items are globular clusters at this distance. They look like other stars in the image. There's supernova remnants. Some bright ones. And because we still had uh, some of those other catalogs listed, you have IC 133 and 132. But plenty of other objects that are still unlisted. So let's go ahead and see if we can figure out what some of those are and maybe even turn on if there's any quasars in the background to see what's what's back there. Okay, we're back in the Typecat script, and now it's time to go ahead and see if there's some of these other objects that we want to identify. So let's look, uh, bubbles, emission nebulae, galactic nebula, molecular clouds, now I know from experience the H2 regions, there'll be a huge number of them. So let's select them, but then we'll go ahead and filter out uh, some later in the spreadsheet editor. And let's go ahead and get the quasars from the background too. Tell it to save as. And you again, you can see it's the image and then all the different filters in the text file. And then the annotation script is updated. Here we are back in Excel, and we do want to pair this giant list back a little bit. Currently, I have 645 objects in here, which is a little too much. Uh, so what I really want to do is pair back the H2 region and I really only want objects that are a little more distended and not point-like. So let's get rid of all the ones that have zero diameter. All right, that took us down to 480 objects, still a large number of them. There's quite a large number of molecular clouds and a lot of quasars in the background. Most of the quasars, I am guessing, will be too dim to see in my image, but maybe we can catch a couple of them. I think we'll do the, the same trick we did before and just change the headers around for right now to see what's really going on in our image. We are back in Pix Insight. Again, ensure that only your last custom catalog is checked and tell it to go ahead and render it. Now it is done rendering and you can see the uh, 
the entire star field at this point is, is pretty much covered. But we do have some uh, more items that are highlighted. Lots of H2 regions now are designated. Even with all the H2 regions designated, there is still a large number of objects that are not designated. So uh, I know recently that there was a paper put out trying to identify a lot of these other structures in the triangulum, especially some of these larger ones that currently aren't named. In this particular image, all I did was tell it to render the quasars with their actual names and I did a quick auto stretch on the annotated image. You can see here, this is the image and just doing a, a quick STF on it, just to see which quasars are really in the background. And this one here, very faint, SDSS, all that. On the Sinbad catalog, you can go ahead and just search for it. And I did, and it does have a redshift of 1.23 using our redshift to distance calculator 1.23 redshift equates to an object that is 12.7 billion light years away and the light travel time was 8.6 billion light years which is quite quite far I hope you found this video helpful and trying to annotate all the items in your image and exploring more of the science in your own images. Please comment, like, and subscribe.